Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining Aditya's uh, YouTube channel on Sudhi Audio. Uh, my name is Rijesh Nair, and as Aditya asked all of us on Facebook and on Instagram, and as I, I tagged on Instagram as well, um, I'm going to try and answer some questions on film mixing, um, loudness, um, and all of those, and Atmos mixes uh, as well. hope all of this is a really good learning journey as well for us because Sudeep Audio's YouTube channel is actually a fantastic um, place for a lot of information you know you have some some really phenomenal conversations with some of the best engineers in India you have some really good tips and tricks you have some really good conversations and tutorials that come in from them uh, and you should really subscribe to this YouTube channel as well because you know some of the stuff on this channel is phenomenal and I also look up to some of the uh, the conversations in, in this channel as well. So I've collected some of the questions that I've received. Um, you know, a lot of them were very common as well. So the common questions, I've grouped them into, you know, like one general question and I'll try and answer that. There are some specific questions and very interesting questions as well, which I'll try and answer. Um, I tried to keep this uh, pertaining to film mixing uh, and, and loudness and Atmos mixing. Uh, so some of the questions that are not part of it, um, I'll try and answer in a different session. But for now, we'll go ahead with um, this particular line of questions. Right. So the first question is from Ria Star, and the question is: Silence is essential for a sound engineer. Uh, H3 they utilized it effectively in A.R. Rahman's early career in songs as well. How well do you think can it be achieved? See, the main context for silence is there should be a reason for silence. Now. There was a period of time in sound design and mixing where, you know, we went completely full on, you know, we, there were, there were films where, you know, almost every frame had a sound. If it's not, if it was not sound effects, it was background score. If it was not background score, it was song, you know, there's something or somewhere that had to be filled. And then we went into a period where, you know, like, let's bring in some silence into this because, um, silence is a very critical part of sound design and, and mixing as well. Because this is what gives you the contrast. You know, if you don't have a contrast, there is nothing uh, that changes in the whole soundscape. Because you know, you will you will be con continuously bombarded with sounds, or you will continuously be experiencing sounds without silence, which means you can't go up or down. Silence is basically the stepping stone to go up. Uh, and when I say go up, I don't mean uh, in terms of volume only. It's it's also in terms of the experience that you get in 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 the film. Now, there was a period where, you know, we went through, it was something was really you know, constant sound. Then we decided, let's have a silences. And the main important factor for silence is you should have a reason for silence. You know, don't have silence for the sake of having silence. And that comes down to a fact where, you know, don't do sound design for the sake of doing sound design. Sound design should be part of the film, should be part of the story that you're telling. Um, and only when it helps move that story forward, only when it helps move the scene forward, will silence be very effective in that. Uh, you can also play with the audience emotion of going completely opposite of something, you know, like when you have huge explosions, or you know, when you have a very mm, painful moment, you cut off sounds, because what that helps you is, rather than spoon feeding the sound uh, towards the audience, this, the audience is given the freedom of imagining what that sound is and that's a very effective way of uh, utilizing silence or utilizing absence of sound as well. Because to be fair, there is no true silence, you know, uh, even if in cinema you'll have room tones or something of that sort and you can make it true silent because, you know, it's a digital format but then, you know, if you're watching it in a cinema theater, there's always going to be you know, some, some kind of a room tone of the theater itself. So the idea of silence is actually the experience of it um, and you know to use it effectively is to find out a reason for silence and to find out what comes before and what follows after now there are two ways you can follow up with silences one is gradually bring the sounds or the other one is you know have a jump cut in sound where you know silence and then suddenly you have a sound the advantage of silence is when you have a sound that comes in suddenly it does not have to be really high in volume you know transients work very well in those kind of situations any 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 sound with a transient works really well but if you want to seep in you know bring the mood back that also works well for silence so that's how that's my um, 
my personal thought towards um, asylums and uh, harkrish asks difference between array and object now the an array is basically a set of speakers you know like if you go to a cinema theater and if you if if you're sitting let's say i'm sitting and watching the screen which is like this uh, on on this side i'll have a set of speakers which would be my uh, my left surround and on this side i'll have a set of speakers which, which which would be my right surround now all of those speakers together is called an array uh, and all of those speakers together i i think the question is to be between bed and object um that's probably what the question is so a bed is anything that feeds into this particular channel so when i say left surround the left surround is made up of all of these speakers you know like 6 8 or 10 speakers that is there in the theater now the advantage of having an object is you can place sounds specifically in a speaker which you could not do otherwise you know if you're moving something you can move it through each speaker now let's say for example you're sitting in a restaurant and you're building a restaurant scene you can actually have you know a, a, the sound of a chef over here or the chef's table over here you know one speaker can have an, an old radio or something that's playing or a tv that's playing you can have one of those you know small bells or something that happen you know as soon as someone opens a door etc so the idea between the the difference between an the object and the bed is the object gives you exact precise uh positional information whereas the uh, bed is something that you would use when you want to smear the entire uh, uh when when the sound uh, needs to be there but does not necessarily need any definition like you know a room tone or um or traffic you know general traffic sounds you know things like that shrikant subramanyam what is the current situation regarding loudness war in the industry especially with the advent of atmos uh, what can we consider as loud and what is good enough that's actually a very good question now uh this particular question relates to film mixing and i also assume it relates to film projection uh, in in the cinema theaters as well now one thing that we need to understand is um in a cinema theater the projectionist or the person who's handling uh, the the projection and the and the amplifiers for the speakers and everything if you think about it from their point of view you know if if i as a mix engineer deliver a mix that is really loud and something that is clipping they would turn it down and the reason they would turn it down is because they don't want the amplifiers to clip or the speakers to blow and um if the amplifiers clip for example what would happen is that channel that or that fuse can get turned off or that channel can get turned off now imagine if a center channel or a left or a right channel gets clipped and it turns off and this is the first um first day first show or a fan show for a particular film that doesn't necessarily turn out to be quite well isn't it so what happens is they turn it down now the problem with that is you know when you have a softer mix that is being played and they don't turn it back up your mix goes down completely in volume so i think the the responsibility lies on on us as well as on us and them as well so us as mix engineers where we deliver a sensible uh, mix one that is not too loud one that does not clip um because it's very important to make sure that Uh, your peaks don't don't distort you don't peak a lot because the more you start peaking the more chances are for the amplifier to clip and when you're mixing an atmos you know you have as a mix engineer or as a sound designer you have um, an added responsibility and the responsibility is the fact that every single speaker is 85 can is calibrated to 85 db spl so technically you can bring out every single speaker to play back 85 db spl and which means in that sense of a mix you can make it really really loud um but it is completely up to you as a mix engineer or as a sound designer to make sure that you are delivering something that makes sense for the film you know um you know the who has recommendations you know of, um you know anything over i think it's over 100 db spl or 110 db spl i don't really remember exactly one of these numbers i think it's 100 db spl um no child below 12 years uh is allowed to be exposed to that kind of a level of sound so when you talk about loudness was the reason loudness was came up was because you know when something was being mixed loud the theaters were bringing it down so the next mix would turn it up even louder you know you know you would have it would it would go like this but you know maintaining still the average of what is there and i think 
it it requires a long time to uh, a long conversation uh, an effort from both sides uh, of the uh, of the whole chain that is the mix engineer sound designers as well as the um, the projection side uh, and the exhibition side as well to be able to have a mix uh, or a or a sound that is nearly perfect there are reasons for it to not be perfect but nearly perfect that's my 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 line of thought on on the loudness was so how how loud is loud um see loudness is very relative it's very relative from person to person um so when you start measuring loudness so for cinema you would measure loudness in terms of um, the leqm whereas for broadcast you would measure in terms of lufs or lkfs depending on what meter that you use um so the, the thing with broadcast is you have delivery specs you know like ebu requires minus 23 lufs um in in the at uh, in the west the atsc requires minus 24 um and so on and so forth every every region has their own um loud spec that you need to follow uh so for cinema so for trailers the the car, the requirement is um the tasa requirement is uh minus is, is 85 uh, uh, dB EQ now for a film the challenge in measuring this is where will you measure it from is it from the start of the film to the end of the film or are you going to measure it reel wise you know it's a very challenging question because if let's say you have four reels of just just conversations and the fifth reel is a complete action sequence uh, you know how will you measure this you know are you going to make the action sequence equal in loudness to your dialogue requirements or you know so on and so forth in which you lose the dynamics of that so it's a very difficult question but uh, the the ideal way to look at this is to make sure that you don't have something that's excruciatingly loud for a long period of time because at that point you know it's just you're just probably uh, going overboard with with loudness at that point so it's always good to maintain good dynamics but it's also very important to look at um, what you are delivering at that point the next question anup rupanwa when one needs to do a final mix on the headphones under under unavoidable circumstances which things should be taken care of and how exactly to adjust the translation from headphones to monitors see the first thing is um, i'm assuming if you're talking about film And if you're talking about film and you're mixing on headphones, you know, you sh- you are missing out on a few things. For example, when you listen to it on speakers, let's say you're mixing for 5.1 and you have left center right and left surround and right surround speakers. Now the sound that comes in from the left speaker will hit both your left and your right ear. And the sound that comes from the right speaker will hit both your left and your right ear. Because when you put on headphones, you know, the left side is going to your left ear and the right side is going to your right ear. You won't get the benefit of the crosstalk. between the speaker so you miss out on on a translational experience that happens in in the speakers itself now you wouldn't do a final mix uh, i mean i wouldn't say you um, there are probably people who are talented and i i i always come across this fact that you know you can have any rule that you like and uh, at the end of the day there's always somebody who's going to go completely opposite to that rule and bring out a completely better um result so i don't and i don't want to say that there's a rule but you know ideally look from my from my point of view i don't mix in headphones for a for a screen experience because i know for a fact that that won't get translated like how my dialogue levels would be completely off uh because when you have a speaker that is anchored in the center versus in your headphones you're listening towards a phantom center your response to this would be completely different you know i usually found my dialogues to be too loud um and you know when when it translates back into um into an lcr and this is not because i've mixed this is just because i was probably rooting or you know finding a um, uh, an edit seek change in edit or something like that and this is my experience has this is what my experience has been so ideally you know if you're delivering for a for a format for a medium try and mix for that medium but if you have multiple mediums mix for the best medium that you want to deliver to and then you know just make sure you check in the other mediums so for example if you're mixing for broadcast you know mix for the best medium that you have mix for the best speakers in the room layout that you have and then listen to it on your headphones just to see how it translates uh, i wouldn't recommend going the other way around um, as well anand ditroy so there's a question from anand ditroy 
The cinema halls do not follow any specific standards for the volume of cinema processors and it varies between 4.5 to 6. So as a mixing engineer, what to do so that the film sounds decent in all possibilities? Also, what are the loudness level for a stereo mix to be followed? Is it recommended to follow a specific loud uh, level for platforms, uh, OTT, etc.? Again, this comes back to the question I answered earlier. Now, 4.5 to 6, um, it, you know, to be honest, it also depends on, you know, I've seen uh, cinema theatres changing it based on the language. You know, like English films, they play at a certain level. Um, South Indian films play at a different level. Bollywood films play at a different level. And I've seen this happen over and over. Uh, the only way, like I said earlier, this can be changed is by making sure you deliver sensible mixes and by making sure that, um, you know, people, uh, you are safe in what you're delivering. And over a period of time, you know, the projectionists will feel confident about keeping it in a certain level. Uh, and that's more important. I mean, people will complain if the sound is too low and people will definitely complain if the sound is too loud. So you have to find the right balance between that. So and don't give a mix that's just extremely loud just because you assume they're going to turn it down because you have no clue what level they're going to keep it at so you know just make sure you give a good mix in that sense so there's a question from vibe of more uh, i want to work as a surround mix engineer i'm currently working as a sound designer how should i start learning more about surround sound where to start where to find opportunities uh so the thing about surround sound is, um, you know, unlike stereo, you need to experience that in a way to learn about surround sound. Um, you know, you can theoretically place elements in, in these positions and, you know, think about what it does. But unless you really experience what the way it sounds, because every mix is, is a personal mix, you know. This, this is why when I mix something or when, when my colleague mixes something or when my friends or when someone else mixes something, they all sound different even though you have the same number of tracks or even if you're given the same tracks and the reason for that is every person approaches the mix differently so you know even when you're starting off learning surround sound so one of the things that i will definitely tell you is like for example there are certain things that you can do and cannot do now there are you know i have a blog it's film-mixing.com uh, so I, I write about surround mixing on that. There are a lot of Facebook, really good Facebook groups that talk about surround mixing as well. Um, there are some institutions in India as well that teach about surround mixing. For example, the TAG is one. Uh, sound Ideas um, is um, another one. Um, and there's also, there's quite a few schools that actually teach you about surround mixing. So those are some things that you should look at. So in fact, Bishwadeep, uh, his school that... Uh, also does kind of an internship program in, in surround mixing which is really good it's more like a finishing course so if you have if you are a sound designer and if you have worked in that field it's good to approach one of these schools and and ask them and speak to them about how you uh, can take this into consideration because you know there are certain do's and don'ts and there are certain there's a lot of things that is left out for creativity um, the do's and don'ts are primarily because of technical requirements like for example you have a delay between your left surround and your left so if you have the same transient element in the left surround and the left you know they'll start clashing against each other so there are certain things like that uh, apart from that there are like for example if you want to start mixing on Dolby Atmos um, there are some really good tutorials on, on Dolby's website um, and on Avid's website as well you should check, check them out um, um, and all of them speak a lot about this because it's very important to understand that all that you can learn from them is rules and techniques. And how you apply that is completely up to you. It's like, you know, if you have a plugin and you take a preset, you know, that preset was designed with a certain sound that was changed to a certain sound. If you load a preset, it's up to you to tweak that preset, you know, to get the sound that you desire. It's the same thing for mixing. You can learn the do's and don'ts. But then it's up to you to deliver the creative aspect of it. So, and that comes by uh, by experience as well. So, yeah, that's that's something that um, I learned by making mistakes. I, I made a ton of mistakes, and um, I don't think uh, you know if you make a mistake and you realize it's a mistake, you know, own up to it and try and fix it. But also remember that this was a mistake, and rather than just finding it out to be a mistake, remember try and find out why. It turned out to be a mistake because when you learn the why it turned out to be a mistake you will under you will actually probably come up with better techniques 
um, of fixing that or you know a completely different way around that so that's very important as well so Vignesh Ramesh uh, can you give some insights about the basics of film mixing including the standard mixing levels layering of dialogues background and sound effects etc okay that's a it's a small question but you know it's a very detailed answer I'll try and make it as short as I can film mixing is basically you know mixing for a screen you know you're mixing for a visual it's a it's a medium where you have an anchor right in front of you to which you're building the soundscape you know of course you know if you remove some of the sound design elements out of it you know if you take away like you have diegetic and non-diegetic sound design and all of that but you know without getting into all of that primarily you're mixing to tell a story that is happening on screen now there are two ways that this happens there is a sound that is from the screen towards that side and there is another layer of sound that is from the screen towards us traditionally the the way 5.1 or 7.1 atmos or any any immersive format is built is from the screen towards us uh, and your story has to be built from the screen towards both sides towards the actors and towards you now the primary thing that anybody anchors themselves on is the dialogues because if you can't understand the dialogues you know you won't follow the story and if you don't follow the story it's not about the sound effects or the songs or the background score that's going to run a film it's it's the story it's how the film carries itself so um the so one of the things that i do when i start is i start with the dialogue remixes and uh, so the, then i have the dialogue i i then balance the foley against the dialogue to make that realistic you know to make the dialogue have sense about what is happening there and the other thing is also because dialogues and foley both require um, slightly different reverbs in order for them to match you know it's very important that i have the dialogues done first and then the foley underneath that so that i get the sense that you know they are in a room uh, probably okay, let's say there is no ambience but they are in a room and that room sounds realistic then i start off with the ambience and the effects depending on which ones i get um the reason i start off with the ambiences is then i have a realistic space um the ambience kind of fills the room or the exteriors and you know things like that and then the sound effects and then you get in the background score now there are quite a few schools of thoughts for background score a it is background score which means it is supposed to be in the background of the film uh but there are certain things that can only be emotionally driven by the use of music um that can really pull at you by the use of music you know it might not work with any other method so how do you treat that what level do you keep it at you know there is to be honest um there is no true answer to that and i'll tell you why um <coughs> when you mix uh, when you mix everything and when you have the background score and you start leveling the background score if you feel that the background score is a hindrance or if you feel that the scene sounds too realistic um then you drop off some of the uh, ambience or some of the effects or something that's you you kind of lower that and then you raise the background score in order to drive an emotion uh but sometimes you know you just want the background score to be kind of a link between two scenes or you want the background score to be a, a state of mind of a person you know depending on all of that the level changes um and what level you keep at ultimately depends on how much of other films and how much of films have you watched and when you watch a lot of films when you watch basically any kind of films you know there are great masters you know like incredibly good mix engineers who've done some incredibly fantastic mixes um throughout the years and the more you keep watching that what happens is within you you will get a sense of what the level has to be it's not a number it is a feel and when you the more you watch the more you get you you seep into that you know you 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 imbibe that into yourself and when you start mixing you you find the balance you know because as you mix you will find that you know the the dialogue is clashing or you find the background is too soft or you know the effects are too loud you know you get all of that only by by experience and the more you start mixing the more you hear different things and you compare your work don't be shy to compare your work you should always compare your work to other works you know because that's how that's how everyone improves you know that's how you improve i improve you know if if i decide that my work is is this and this is it then you know uh, i i'm doing two things i'm you know closing myself to what else is happening around the world and um i am preventing myself from learning new things um 
so it's important and it's also very important to uh, you know on this note to give compliments uh, if you find that something is really good you know uh, it's not, it should not be about complaining you know like they say um give compliments in public and complaints in private you know make sure you if you find a good film that's been done by your friend or you know your colleague or anyone um, just call them up and tell them like you know it's a good work you know, that's a good motivation as well you have nothing to lose mm-hmm.